All of you are welcome to my station. I'm going to talk about some of the most famous true crime cases in Asia that everyone should know about. Thanks for giving my station your support. If you like true crime stories, but don't know much about Asian cases, you might want to subscribe. The case today takes place in India's New Delhi. It's one of the most famous sex crimes in history and it led to protests and movements for women's rights around the world. It was this case that gave rise to the 2019 Netflix show Delhi Crime. The media followed Indian law and called it the Nirbhaya case, which comes from a fake name that means fearless. At first, the victim's real name wasn't given out, so fake names like Nirbhaya were used. But later, with her parents' agreement, her identity was made public. This case is very important because it started a worldwide movement to stop sexual violence against women, which led to good changes in Indian law and the court system. Let's look at today's case, which started on December 16, 2012, and is about Nirbhaya. Life of Pai was a great movie to watch with our friend, Awindra Pratap Pandey, who is 22 years old and a physiotherapy intern. They did it in Unarka, a neighbourhood in South Delhi. Around 9.30pm, they got on a bus to go home, but they didn't know that danger was coming. There were six guys on the bus, plus the driver. Soon after getting on, Awindra felt like something wasn't right when the bus went off route. He asked the driver a question, which made the group of guys already on the bus angry. They scare and question the two about staying out so late. As things got worse, Oendra and the six guys got into a fight. He was severely beaten until he passed out. The attention then turned to Giotti, who was led to the back of the bus. She was savagely kicked with an iron rod and sexually assaulted by the men, who later confirmed that they hurt her belly intestines and genitalia very badly. As a brave defence, Giotti fought back and bit three of the attackers. They stepped up the attack because they were angry. After that, the unconscious victims were thrown out of the moving bus, where a bystander found them around 11pm, the Delhi cops were called, and both victims were taken to Saftarjan Hospital right away. Giotti was seriously hurt and had multiple surgeries, but she was still in a critical state. The Indian government put together a group of doctors to make sure that everyone got the best medical care. Even though there were worries about her health, on December 26, it was decided to send her to a hospital in Singapore so that she could get organ transplants. It happened on the trip to Singapore on December 27, Giotti had a heart attack and never woke up. It was said that she was dead on December 29 around 5 a.m. The news of this horrible act shook the whole country. Within a day, the suspects were caught by Delhi cops. The CCTV video helped find the charter bus and its 30-year-old driver, Ram Singh. With the male victim's help, police were able to draw sketches of the attackers and find the victim's stolen cell phones. All six of the men involved were caught. There was a bus driver named Ram Singh, his 26-year-old brother Mukesh Singh, an assistant gym teacher named Vinay Sharma, a fruit seller named Pawan Gupta, a 17-year-old boy named Muhammad Afroz, and a 28-year-old man named Akshay Thakur, who had come to Delhi looking for work. The men had been drinking and partying before the violent event. Even though the bus driver wasn't allowed to pick them up because the windows were darkened, they still took the bus. The first person they hit was a 35-year-old carpenter who they robbed and beat before leaving. The cops were told, but nothing was done. The five grown men were charged five days after Giotti's death on January 3, 2013. Mohamed Afroz, the child, was tried separately in a court for kids. In a troubling turn of events, 
One of the suspect's lawyers said that the victims were to blame for the attack because they were out late at night or took the bus. His insulting comments about women were just as bad. On March 11, 2013, Ram Singh was found hanging in his cell. It was not clear whether it was a suicide or murder. This made people very angry and they wanted a hearing right away. The four adults were found guilty by a fast-track court in Delhi on September 10, 2013. After three days, they were given the death penalty by hanging. Their begs for mercy were turned down by Judge Yojish Khanna, who said that their crimes had shocked the whole country and that justice would not ignore what they did. The minor offender got three years in prison and got out in 2015. While he was on death row, Mukesh Singh didn't feel sorry for what he did and blamed the victim. On March 13, 2014, the Delhi High Court ruled that all four men should be put to death. In 2017, the Supreme Court confirmed their death sentences, even though they had appealed. The four prisoners were put to death in Tihar Jail on March 20, 2020, after efforts to get the president to spare their lives failed. The event made people all over the world very angry, and it led to protests in India and South Asia. Because of this tragedy, there were protests against sexual violence that called for harsher punishments and more state responsibility. Outrage over the involvement of a child led to changes in the Juvenile Justice Act that let 16 to 18-year-old offenders be tried as adults for the worst crimes. India changed its laws to make rape more serious. Now, people who commit rape face at least 10 years in prison and 20 years in prison for rape that causes death or a mental state. Even with these changes, crimes against women still happen because police aren't doing their jobs well enough. To stop these kinds of crimes, experts say that society needs to change and deal with deeply rooted patriarchal values through meaningful conversation. There were big changes to the law in India because of the case, but it's still hard to enforce these rules and change the way people think about women.